I'm joined by Kyle Bogomis. Welcome, Kyle. How are you? Raja Suleiman with Orzov. Max McVitie. Wow. Congratulations, wow. Brian DeMars. Zach Allen. <laughs> I wouldn't be here without these guys, though, so. And the champion of Proto Concert Arcade, Ari Lax. Hello, everyone. This is Connor Mullally for another episode of Making Magic Happen, brought to you by RIW Hobbies in Livonia, Michigan. Uh, welcome to my first episode on the channel. I'm really excited to be here. I just joined the team, and I can't wait to bring you all some of the some more of the great content that you've been coming to expect from Zach and the rest of the folks here. Um, a little bit about me. I started playing competitive magic in 2016, kind of grew up in the Michigan PPTQ circuit. Um, played around there for a couple years. Since then I've become an SCG tour grinder and I play a lot of magic online. Um, my resume includes an SCG open top eight, uh, four large magic online top eights, and most recently I made the finals of the Pioneer Mox Showcase this season. So I'm um, really excited to be here, really excited to be bringing y'all some content. Today we're going to be playing a little bit of Modern, playing Blue Red Prowess. This is a deck that I got from um, Brandon Burton, also known as Sandy Dog, who is one of the best um, red beatdown players that is active today, honestly. Dude plays a lot of Magic Online and he plays a lot of Burn and Prowess strategies. So um, I'm really excited to give this one a try. What we're looking at is using cheap prowess threats like Monastery's Swift Spear, Soul Scar Mage, and then a lot of cheap spells to attack and try to get our opponent dead as soon as possible. Um, we have Lava Dart, Gut Shot, Mutagenic Growth, and Lightning Bolt as kind of our cheap spells to fuel that. We have Manamorphose as our free spell. Um, this is just another free spell to complement these Phyrexian mana spells. Um, the biggest draw to be playing blue over something like black or white is Stormwing Entity. And what this card does is it's a 5 mana 3-3 three, three that costs 3 less if you cast an instant or sorcery this turn and it has flying, prowess, and ETB, end of the battlefield, scry 2. And this card is really good because it essentially dodges all of Modern's biggest removal right now. Uh, Lightning Bolt and Fatal Push are kind of ruling the format. Path to Exile is around a little bit, but not a ton. This card can never be Fatal Pushed and it dodges Lightning Bolt a lot of the time just because we have so many free spells that a lot of times our opponent will point a bolt at it and will say, okay, like, gut shot something or mutagenic growth something else to push damage through so a lot of the times this is just a two mana hex proof three three flyer which is just incredible um kind of rounding out the threats we've got sprite dragon it's not the most efficient thing in the world but we just kind of need threats and it can definitely be a fast clock with some of our free spells um we have light up the stage here just as card advantage to keep our land drops flowing and things like that and then Bedlam Reveler to be the top end. If we're starting to flood out a little bit and just need a little bit of gas to get across the finish line, this is a great way to do it. As for the sideboard, we're looking at some blue spells. Um, Ether Gust is great against all the Primeval Titan decks, especially Titan Bile that's been going around right now. And it's also super useful against Burn and the Prowess Mirrors. Uh, spell Pierce is good against any like control or combo decks. Surgical is, you know, there's a lot of dread. There's been some dredge going around. I've been. Um, Made a deep run in a tournament recently in the last Mana Traders Modern Tournament with Dredge, and so try to keep that in check. It's also not bad if we play against any Uros. Uh, Dragon's Claw, obviously, for Red Mirrors. A Braid. We're basically bringing a Braid against anyone that has creatures, and then Blood Moon's pretty obvious. So let's get to it. We're going to hop in a league here. All right, here we are for round number one. Um, we're looking at an all right hand. We've got three lands, a threat, and then some free spells. Hopefully Opt can find us another threat. Um... I'm going to keep this one. It's a little on the, um, it's a little bit fragile, but hopefully Opt is able to find us another threat, so that if our opponent has like a Bolt, well, I suppose Bolt wouldn't be very good against this hand, but if our opponent has something like a Fatal Push, then they won't really be able to interact, or the, we'll be able to um, find a backup threat for our Soul Scar, basically. Looks like our opponent's on a Death Shadow strategy if they're leading on bobble into watery grave but they could also be on urza of some sort some sort of Wurza deck although that gets a lot less likely with mox opal um our opponent's pretty likely to just take soul scar mage here which is definitely one of the downsides of this hand it's very fast with these two free spells but pretty weak to disruption so 
I will say though that mulliganing to beat Thoughtseize, like if I were to try to mulligan to a hand that had two threats, is just never really something that I'm interested in doing. I'm gonna fire off this opt right now. Leave a threat on top. We just don't want opt to get um, stubborn denial there. That would be that would be really bad for us. Stub is something that's not always great against us, just because our spells are very cheap and kind of redundant. We don't really need like one big spell to resolve, so Stubborn Denial will never really be trading up on mana or anything like that. So not really going to give them a good opportunity to stub what will probably be one of our more important spells of this game. My refrigerator is making some strange noises. Hopefully that's not bad. deep in the tank here. They only have four cards in hand, so it looks like they might have taken a mulligan. Okay, yeah, they, they started on six cards, so they got a lot to think about here. Um, it's possible that they are... It's possible that they're... I, I don't know. Um, honestly, it's just possible that they're AFK. But what we're really hoping not to see here is a Gurmag Angler. Um... Another thought seize is also not ideal just because we really kind of need this soul scar mage to stick around. So I think that really okay, so our opponent must have a fatal push. Um They only have one land, which is pretty good for us. Okay. So I think that resolving this light up the stage is going to be pretty important. So I'm going to use Gutshot here to turn on Spectacle and then cast light up the stage. All right, Lava Dart and another light. Here I'm just going to play out our Soul Scar Mage and say go. I expect that our opponent's going to use a Fatal Push here just to take care of our Skull Scar Mage before it can turn on this light up the stage, but we will see. Point thinking here, um, so they did draw their second land. They're still likely Death Shadow, but Island makes that a little bit less likely. They could just be some sort of blue-black control deck. Um, but Mishra's Ball still has me putting them on Shadow for now. It's possible they're thinking about whether they want to try to turn on a Gurmag Angler this turn, or if they want to... Ooh, okay. Um, let's see, so if we Mutagenic Growth here, then our thing becomes exactly a 5, which means it does not survive. So... Really hoping this light up the stage finds another threat. We're just going to start with Lava Dart U and then stage again. If we're going to draw more lands, Fiery Islet's not the worst one. That one can kind of solve our, our flooding problem a little bit here. This looks like a Gurmag Angler. Um, I'm going to go and get a Steam Vents. I don't really want to fire off this Lava Dart at the end of my opponent's turn, just because they could, um, if we draw a Light Up the Stage, or... What's the blue creature? I, I, I always forget what that one's called. Stormwing Entity. If we draw Stormwing Entity, we would rather have this Lava Dart able to cast. And then we got really rewarded there. So we're going to fire this off, and then that gives us a spell for our Stormwing Entity. We still get to keep our... Mutagenic growth in hand. Um, neither of these are very good. I'm going to put both of those on the bottom. We don't really want uh, lightning bolts at this point, just because we're looking for, honestly, repeatable sources of damage. But this Stormwing Entity should be good enough to get us there. You know, it's possible that I'm supposed to keep that lightning bolt just because... I just need to attack one time with Stormwing Entity, but one attack with Stormwing Entity is like still going to win me the game. So, yeah, this is fine. It's 
So then right now we're looking at um, mutagenic growth plus lava dart is two prowess triggers. So this thing will be attacking for five. Lava dart makes it six. Mutagenic growth is seven and eight. So yeah, I was probably supposed to leave that lightning bolt on top. That wasn't the best play because the plan here is just to burn them out next turn. Um, they can't fatal push this and they can't really dismember it. So I fully admit that was not the most heads up play, but luckily we just drew another lightning bolt. So nothing matters, never punished. And we'll just be going in for the kill here. <laughs> another lava dart just makes things easy. All right. Um, let's start with, let's start with lightning bolt here. Imagine that's going to get a stub. Um, I should have led on Lava Dart. That was a mistake. Should have gone Lava Dart, Lava Dart, Mutagenic, then Lightning Bolt, because we would much rather that this Lightning Bolt resolve than, say... We would much rather a Lava Dart get stubbed than a Lightning Bolt, or this Mutagenic get stubbed than a Lightning Bolt, but... I think that we've just got lethal here, so shouldn't matter too much. Yeah. So we're just going to flash this back. And then um, if my opponent had a second dismember here, they would have fired it off in response to that, that prowess trigger there. But we just have the lethal damage here. Even if they have another stubborn denial, our um, storming entity will still be a 7-7. Seven, seven. So... Our opponent had a little bit of a slow draw. We were able to find our best threat to punish them, and we take down game one. So against Death Shadow, um, I don't love bringing in too many cards, to be honest. I like the Spell Pierces, just because they'll usually get to counter a Fatal Push or a Stubborn Denial or something important like that. And I do like... Hmm, I don't think I like Blood Moon. I think that we're just trying to be lean and efficient, and Blood Moon is just kind of not great for that plan. It can slow them down in the later game, but um, if they or in the in the early game, but if they fetch correctly, they'll probably be fetching up basics in this matchup, and so they'll still be able to play through it. And um, our deck isn't really capable of winning a long game, and so we're really just trying to be lean and efficient. Um, excuse me, I'm gonna cut Sprite Dragon and Gutshot. Gutshot just because. We need a little bit of higher card quality after board, and it's like the objectively least powerful card in our deck. And then Sprite Dragon, because it costs two mana but still dies to Fatal Push. So bring in the Spell Pierces, cutting those two. Not super interested in any of these because they just don't really have targets. And then a Braid is um, can't go upstairs. They don't have any relevant artifacts, and it doesn't kill any of their creatures other than Snapcaster Mage. So... I can see an argument for bringing in Blood Moons, and it's entirely possible that it's correct. But um, I'm still pretty new to playing this deck, and so I haven't gotten my game plans fully hammered out yet. Uh, right now, I'm, I think that it's more important for us to be efficient and kind of have one cohesive strategy in this matchup, because objectively their cards are more powerful than ours. So we need to make sure that we're capitalizing on our synergies rather than just trying to play a haymaker on them. Pop out the graveyards here. Opponent has chosen to play first. Looks like they're looking at a particularly difficult hand. It's possible that it's another one with not a whole lot of lands. I found that that's where a lot of the difficult mulligan decisions in Modern are. Um, it's like whether or not to keep one landers, whether or not to keep one landers with a bauble. Um, with the London mulligan, I usually err on the side of just like going down to five pretty consistently. Like. I just want hands that function. If, if you can play Magic, the cards in Modern are powerful enough that, like, you'll be able to catch up. You just don't want to have non-games, is my philosophy. So this hand is obviously a mulligan. This hand is a keep. Um, it's 
This one's a little sketchy, not gonna lie. Probably going to get rid of the wooded foothills. Could be pretty bad for us if we, um... Can we get rid of steam vents, actually. Could be pretty bad for us if we just, like, get our Sprite Dragon Thought Seized, or get our Sprite Dragon Fatal Push and our Bedlam Reveler Thought Seized, but... We're already on six cards, um... In a matchup like this, where they're trading with a lot of our cards and thought seizing us, I tend to prefer keeping a lot of spells in my hand rather than a lot of mana, especially because this deck just doesn't need that much mana to function. Two lands is more than enough. That was a very good draw. Um, kind of like we saw last game, this is just our most important card in the matchup. They have a very difficult time killing it outside of Dismember, so next turn we're likely just going to play Split play Sprite Dragon, try to draw out one of their removal spells, and then hopefully land a Stormwing Entity on turn three. A little bit of a slower start for my opponent, which um, when we have Bedlam Reveler in hand is something that I really like to see. If this game goes long and we can get some value out of this, then that's probably going to be pretty good. I'm just going to get a tapped Steam Vents here. Um, I don't think that we're going to get Blood Mooned by them. Not that, not that that matters, of course. You know, I don't know. Why I'm thinking about Blood Moon when I'm basically a mono red deck. And um, because of the way this deck is built, you can never really F6 because you could always, um, if you F F6, you're kind of telegraphing to your opponent, no, I don't have a mutagenic growth in hand, no, I don't have a gut shot in hand. Feel free to bolt my thing that mutagenic growth would save. So. Alright, that's fine. Like I said, we were really just, um, we were hoping that that drew a dismember just to clear the way for our Stormwing Entity, but that's all right. Our next turn is probably just going to be dart our opponent's face and then cast Stormwing Entity. Try to find like some mana morphoses or for some more spells for this Bedlam Reveler. This is not good. If our opponent Thought Scours here, oh, cling to dust. Wow, okay. That's um that's actually a card that's very good against us. Oops, sorry, kinda readjusted and bumped the desk a little bit there. Sorry about that. Probably gonna get our Stormwing Entity Thought seized, which really sucks, not gonna lie. But that's alright. Hopefully we'll just draw another one. If they have something like a Dismember in hand, I could see them going after the Bedlam Reveler just to deny us the value later down the road. So if they um, if they take Bedlam Reveler, I think that we need to figure out if we can play around Dismember. That makes sense. Whether that be waiting until we draw like a Mutagenic Growth or something to run out this Stormwing Entity, um, I'm not really sure. It all depends on what our next draw step was going to be. So, because they have taken, they killed our Sprite Dragon, took our 3-3, three, three. we're probably just going to be playing Drago for a little while. Um, no real interest in firing off these burn spells at our opponent, so really just going to be waiting for them to get a threat out there, see if we can kill it. If we can't, then oh well. And this looks like they have a Gurmag Angler. To be honest, if they tap out for this Gurmag Angler, I'm probably just going to try to kill it with our Dart and our Bolt. Um, we just can't really let them be clocking us if we're not also clocking them. So because we don't have any threats right now that can race Gurmag Angler, we just have to kill it. Unfortunately, it looks like they have Stubborn Denial. And so... That could make things difficult. Um, I'm just gonna play the Steam Vents tapped and say go. Um, in their upkeep, I think. I think we're gonna do these in their upkeep. With this Bedlam Reveler in hand, um, I'm willing to just try to play a controlling game rather than 
an aggressive one. All right, moment of truth, chat. I'm sorry, I'm used to talking to my my chat rather than rather than being on YouTube here. So, unfortunately, they did have the star denial, but I do think that that's something that we have to play into. Um, we just can't really let the skirmish angler stick around. And then we also do have to like get spells into our graveyard for Bedlam Reveler purposes, but this is looking like it's going to be a much harder game to win. Alright, yeah. So we're going to need some good runouts. Um, this was essentially a blank draw just because you can never get two Bedlam Revelers from the same hand into play at once, just because you'll always discard the second one to the first one. Um, Honestly, really just hoping to peel like a string of Manamorphos here, or opt into Manamorphos, or something crazy like that. That's really our best way back into this into this game, um, which essentially means we're gonna have to get really lucky. All right. Um. Unfortunately, didn't get there. So what we're going to try to do is kill this Death Shadow and then go to one life. If our opponent has Street Wraith or anything to protect it, we lose. Another Stubborn Denial, we lose. But um, it's just kind of part of doing business. Not great sacrificing lands to our removal spells when we're um, trying to cast 8 drops, but... Just how it goes sometimes, I guess. Waiting for our opponent to pay costs. Snap. Caster cling to dust. Okay. Not really sure what that does, given that they can't cast Storm Denial. Oh no. Opponent. Opponent, no. Um... As it is, I don't really think that we have any outs, unfortunately. Our opponent doesn't seem to understand here that Blood Crypt makes... Oh, they just have a Dismember to save their Shadow. Okay, that makes sense. Alright. So something that I noticed there is our opponent didn't really fetch basics until the end of the game. Um, I think that on the play, Blood Moon gets a lot better, and I think I want to try it over the Sprite Dragons. I think the Sprite Dragons are just really bad. Trading a two-mana creature for a one-mana removal spell in Fatal Push is just not where we want to be. We want our creatures to be either one mana, like our Soul Scars and our Swift Spears, or not dying to Fatal Push like these ones. So we're going to give Blood Moon a try. Now that we're on the play, I think it gets a lot better on the play than on the draw, so. This hand is not particularly good. I'm not really trying to keep one landers, even if it does have light at the stage. This one's a lot better. Very threat dense. Has a blood moon, so if we get the opportunity to blood moon them, we're probably going to be in good shape. Even if we don't, we've got more threats than they probably have fatal pushes, so. I uh, guess I shouldn't be F6 just in case my opponent has like. Lightning Bolts in their deck. Um, I don't think Shadow's playing too many Lightning Bolts these days, but it can't really hurt to not telegraph my lack of mutagenic growth to them. All right. No Thought Seize is actually really good for us. I do really like to see that. So I'm just going to run out both my Swift Spears here and attack for three. Um, something that's really important in the Shadow versus the aggressive deck matchups is that you really want, um, you can like be attacking and be aggressive, but you want your early damage to come from repeatable sources of damage. Like, you don't want to be firing lightning bolts and lava spikes upstairs at them if you don't have creatures to back it up. 
just because then you're you're doing the work of making their shadows big for them. You're using cards, and then they're just being able to put their dual lands into play tapped. So it looks like our Soulscar Mage is going to get pushed here. That's all right. Um, we're really just hoping next turn that we draw a basic land for this Blood Moon, and then, or any land, I suppose, but a land for this Blood Moon, and hopefully that puts the game away. Sorry about that, y'all. My um, my Alexa just went off. I'm not really sure why. I'm not really sure what it heard, but sorry about that. I'll try to make sure that doesn't happen again. Opponents thought scouring themselves. That's a good sign for us. Hopefully they just, um, not sure what I want them to do here, to be honest. Hopefully they just don't have a second land, but looks like they do. Looks like they're going to be playing Gurmag Angler here. Hopefully they do that off of, like, a Blood Crypt, but they went ahead and got Swamp. Kind of unfortunate for us, but this Blood Moon could still do some work at cutting them off of blue. Something else that I really like about Blood Moon is that Death Shadow's ability to fetch is just so, so important. Um, their fetch lands let them like control the size of their shadows and make their shadows bigger, and so shutting off their ability to fetch and limiting them to only one, um, one black spell per turn or only one blue spell per turn is actually a really big deal. Unfortunately, you know, our opponent's playing around that by getting the swamp, but Blood Moon still has potential. Unfortunately, we, we missed on the land there. Um, Lava Dart was a really good draw. We actually are attacking or dealing 11. If our opponent were to just attack here and then not have interaction, we would be dealing 11 to them next turn. So definitely got a pretty good clock here. They'll probably just leave Gurmag Angler back and we'll just play draw go for a little while. goes ahead and fetches steam vents. <sighs> okay. It would be pretty ideal if our opponent attacked with Gurmag Angler and said go. And then I would try to, um, depending on what we draw, of course. But then it would be possible for me to try to lava dart the Death Shatter to death. It's like pretty aggressive, especially because we only have two lands right now, but we might just have to get really aggressive to win this game. That would let us deal nine to them, but it's pretty likely that they have something like a fatal push, and then that line just kind of loses to dismember. So we'll have to think about it, depending on what we draw and what else they do this turn. Put it kind of deep in the tank here. Um, I'll be completely honest, I'm not sure if this means anything. It could just mean they went to go grab a glass of water. But I'm trying to think of what we're trying to draw here. Um, another Lava Dart would be fine. Um, something like a Mutagenic Growth for us to like try to just win the game would be fine. We're really just hoping that they attack with Gurmag Angler here. That's the biggest thing. We just need to get some damage in and try to get this game over with. 
Because at the end of the day, their cards are like a lot more powerful than ours, and they're able to interact with our threats a lot better than we can interact with theirs. So the fewer turns the game goes, the better it is for us. Um, this is a little bit scary. Okay. Um, be completely honest, I think that it's best for us to just play Blood Moon here. I think that going and trying to kill Death Shadow when that just loses so hard to a Dismember or a Stubborn Denial is not really where we want to be. So I'm willing to just do this, try to get a stub out of their hand. Cause if they if they stub this and then our Lava Dart is good to go next turn, I think that that's a much better spot for us to be. Now there's a question of do I want to attack here? If I get in four damage, then their shadow becomes a seven seven or sorry a six six, and then they can just take it all and it would be an eight eight, and then I'm dead to like any fetch land. So I think I'm just supposed to pass at this point. I'm not trying to make that shadow big and give them a good attack with it. If they have t like. We still have a chance of beating Teamer Battle Rage this game. It's a small chance. Um, I would rather not lose on the spot to it. Okay, Lava or Thought sees our Lava Dart is pretty bad to be honest. Because now we are dead to Teamer Battle Rage. Obviously, getting a spell with Flashback Thought sees isn't the end of the world, but still not where we want to be. I would have preferred that be like an Inquisition or something. I wouldn't be surprised to see an attack with just Gurmag Angler here and then leave Shadow back to block. Opponent really deep in the tank here. Um, hmm. Okay. So maybe they're doing the math on like the odds that I draw a spell here. Okay. So let's think here. My opponent's attacking me for 11. If they have a dismember. I lose if I don't block. If they have a team or battle rage, I lose. Uh, they make their shadow... Jeez, sorry. Something just made a weird noise. Um, fridge is acting up. If they have a team or battle rage, let's just say I block shadow. Then it becomes 4... It's 11, 17. So battle rage has me dead unless I double block. But if I double block something or like block both... Then, oh, what if I were to just block Gurmag Angler? Since eight, six, no, that's still lethal, unfortunately. Um, I don't think I'm supposed to block here. That's like really strange, but um, I don't think that I can beat a team or battle rage. To survive a team or battle rage, I have to block with two of my creatures, and then I just think that it's extremely unlikely that I win. So I'm just going to say no blocks here. If my opponent has a dismember, then that is what it is, but I just think that that's like really hard to beat. Um, I could also just like lose to Bolt here, but All right, looks like my opponent just has another Gurmag Angler. If we draw a spell, we win here. So any spell off the top, um, Creature probably won't do it, but, oh wait, hang on. Yeah, no, creature, Monastery Swifter was the only creature that did it there, chat. So, I'm a professional. And we're going to take this match down. Get our opponent for Exaxes. Really love to see it. 
And this is honestly why I'm, like, a pretty big fan of just making them have the Battle Rage or making them have the Bolt. Like, I only had two cards. Sometimes that's just not going to be in their hands. Sometimes it will and you're going to lose, but I think in that instance we were just so unlikely to win a game where they had Team or Battle Rage anyways, so... That's round one. Um, I'll see y'all back for round two. All right, we are back for round two here on Making Magic Happen. Playing some blue-red prowess in the modern league. We won our first round and won the die roll this round. Or this, yeah, this round. Um, Not a big fan of keeping one landers on the play. So we're going to ship this one. I know it has an opt, but Stormwing Entity is essentially a three-mana card. So... Not really going to give that one a try. We'll, we'll keep this. It's a little bit speculative, but... Swift Spear is one of our more powerful cards, as is Lava Dart. So let's rock and roll. Definitely going to need some things to go right for this hand, but I think it's powerful enough that we don't want to go to five. Mishra's Bauble. We're playing against Death Shadow again. We very well could be. Oh yeah, wow, okay. Yep, looks like we're playing against another Grixis Death Shadow opponent. Um, I actually might have played against this person earlier, funnily enough. So, luckily Inquisition only takes one of our Lava Darts. That's actually pretty good for us. Alright, not the best draw, but... We will make do. Just going to get in for one with our Swift Spear. Um, don't really want to be getting in a lot of damage early. Like, we, we want to attack with our creatures, but we don't want to, like, turbo their shadows out for them. Also, saving mutagenic growth lets us attack through something like a Gurmag Angler or a large shadow. So we'll hang on to that. Um, here... Probably going to fire off a Lava Dart at our opponent's face and then try to resolve Stormwing Entity. The face is the place. And then once we resolve this card, it's really just hoping that our opponent doesn't have Dismember. Um, they have a very hard time beating this after it lands. We don't want Bedlam Reveler, but we will absolutely take another Stormwing Entity. Bedlam Reveler is um, not the best when the only spells we have in our graveyard are going to be flashed back soon. So Our opponent's shocked there, which is really interesting. Okay, a couple of Death Shadows. They're just dead, right? Yeah, our opponent is just dead here. So we go Mutagenic Growth, Dart, Dart. Let's just double check the math here. So it's three Prowess Triggers. So this thing's a 6-6. Six, six. Yeah, they're... Okay. I guess, like, if they don't have Dismember, like, might not even... It's kind of, like, got to hope there. Hope that I'm not able to kill them. But we were able to do it. Um, Going to board the same way as we did last round. Not a fan of Blood Moon on the draw. We'll probably bring it back in for game three on the play. Just going to cut a couple of our less impactful spells for Spell Pierces that might actually get the chance to trade one for one. Slow our opponent down a little bit and protect our threats. I like this hand. Um, uh, actually, so it has Stormwing Entity and it can cast it on turn two, which is really good. Problem is, if our opponent Thought Seizes our Stormwing Entity, then we're just gonna lose the game. Um, I don't normally like mulliganing to beat Thoughtseize, but because our other two spells are just literal blanks, if we don't have this card, I'm going to take a mulligan. Okay, this hand's a little bit better. Um, probably just going to cast... This is interesting. Um, we're going to keep it. Probably just gonna get rid of Gut Shot. Uh, we could like cast a turn one light up the stage, but I don't think that that's super necessary. 
also like not really trying to spend two cards to just like draw two new ones that we might not even be able to cast. So, yep, that makes sense. Our opponent leading on Swamp, they didn't fetch, so they're not necessarily playing around Blood Moon here, but that is something to take note of. Was that they mulligan and they kept a hand with Swamp. So it's possible that something like, uh, it's possible that Blood Moon is on their radar as a possibility. We're gonna play our Sprite Dragon. Um, they have a push, they have a push, but we only have two spell pierces to protect it against something like Fatal Push, so I'm not going to play Scared. Our opponent unfortunately uses it to just like lose a life, which isn't great for us. Giving our opponent that choice is, I don't know, a little sketchy because now they're probably just going to like kill us with the Death Shadow, but I don't really think that we can hold back. It's just like not really how we're winning this game. Our opponent doesn't have a threat yet either, which is good for us. Um, looks like they have a shadow in hand, but they don't have fetches and shocks to turn it on, which is pretty nice for us. Ooh. I think that this is something we want. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's a very real chance that we can cast this one soon. I'm going to keep it. Yep. It's fine. So our opponent plays out a shadow here. It chose not to. Okay, that's interesting. Um, I'm just gonna pass. I'm not really in a hurry here. Um, it looks like in my mind they had a shadow, but then they remembered we had lightning bolt, and so they couldn't play their shadow. So I, th I think that that's what that pause was. Snapcaster mage. Damn. That's that's not good. Um, I'm gonna spell Pierce here. That way they just like even if this Thoughtseize resolves, they can't shadow us this turn. Cause like they're gonna take Bedlam Reveler here, and unfortunate like it's pretty unfortunate, but um don't know if there's a whole lot we can we can do about it. I think that making them tap out so that they can't get their big shadow in play is going to be the best that we get out of this spell pierce, to be honest. Wow, chat. Oh, <laughs> I keep talking like I'm streaming again. Whoops. So let's see, that's, that's three spells? Okay, I'm going to cast a Manamorphose, end of turn see what they'd want to do. It's just like make red green. Cast this mutagenic growth and then hopefully this Bedlam Reveler can do something good. Hopefully just find like a land here. Alright, well gonna discard these not ideal obviously but I'm just gonna try to get this Bedlam Reveler into play yikes that was not a very good four cards was it maybe I was supposed to be more patient and just play out the Swift Spear there I'm not sure so we do have one Lava Dart in our graveyard and we do have this Fiery Eyelet so it's possible that we're just going to be able to kill our opponent next turn if they don't have another threat here Possibly even if they do have another threat here, to be honest. So let's think about this. Um, we're going to start by cracking Fiery Eyelet and seeing what we draw. Gut shot. Okay. So we have three prowess triggers here to make this a six. And we have um, five damage. 
So if our opponent has Stubborn Denial, then we can still win. We, we can win through one stub. So let's start with Gut Shot. Oh, no, no. Oh, no. I misclicked. That was really, really bad, y'all. <sighs> okay, unfortunately, our opponent has um, Ether Gust here, which means we're not going to win the game this turn. But we're still not in a bad spot. We're going to just put Bedlam Reveler back on top, draw it again this turn, hope that our opponent's last card is not Team or Battle Rage. Ether Ghost is something that wasn't really on my radar, but definitely something I have to play around a little bit more. Okay, so they didn't have the TBR, and they don't have another creature either. So if this is, um, if this is another Ether Gust, we're going to lose, but we get three fresh ones here. Oh, let's see what we can find. Okay, um, we have an interesting decision here. I think I need to just attack with Sprite Dragon and Lava Dart my opponent. I think that that's going to be the winning line, and then just chump block with Bedlam Reveler. Um, I kind of lose to a, to a removal spell either way. Let's see, I think I'm, maybe I'm supposed to hang back with both, and then just try to win with Bedlam Reveler next turn. That's probably better, isn't it? But... Let's think. What punishes that line? So, attacking with... Hanging back. If my opponent goes, Fatal Push your Sprite Dragon. If they have Fatal Push, I think we're losing either way. Unless we draw exactly Lightning Bolt. Um... If our opponent draws another creature, then it will be better that we attack with Sprite Dragon. We can't beat Team or Battle Rage either way. We can't beat Snapcaster Mage, obviously. Um, if we draw Lightning Bolt next turn, we win either way if our opponent can't kill us. Um, so because we're losing to a removal spell, I think it's best if we attack with Sprite Dragon, make it a 2-2, and just try to win. So this is better against another creature, against a Gurmag Angler or a Death Shadow, because it flies. It's better against, um, well, we're not beating a removal spell either way, unless we draw exactly Lightning Bolt off the top. So, yeah, Fatal Push just kind of KOs us there. We just have to Chump Block with Bedlam Reveler here and hope we draw um, a Lightning Bolt. So, that's the plan. Pretty unlikely to win this game. Um, I don't think there was a ton that I could have done to play around Ether Gust there. So, let's just thin this deck out a little bit. Oh, okay. Um, that's not nothing. Let's thin our deck out just a little bit more and try to scry a bolt to the top. So no jump blocker.
So this, is a, this looks like a Gurmag Angler. Ha! Huh. Alright, so I'm getting punished for um, fetching. To be completely honest, that one wasn't really on my radar. So we would have ended up losing that game eventually, but um, yeah, that, that card just like wasn't really on my radar. I should I should play around that. I'm um, gonna make the same swap. I'm bringing Blood Moons on the play. Still not in love with Sprite Dragon on the play. Um, we'll see how we like this. I, I could see having Blood Moon in my deck being wrong, but um, I think it's all right. Man. I'll give this a try, but I'm, like, not excited about it. I just really don't like mulliganing against decks that have Thoughtseize. But it's entirely possible that we just, like, need a better hand than this. I don't know. I'm still kind of learning the ropes with this deck, so... Mulligans aren't aren't exactly my strong suit with this. Usually I'm used to decks like um, Lotus Storm and Pioneer or Dredge and Modern, where... It's just like very clear cut if you're supposed to you're just supposed to like mulligan down to three to get your combo cards and just like mulligan as many times as you need to whereas this deck it's like yeah but you know is it better to be have a week seven like this and so i, I could definitely see this being a mullet being correct to mulligan but storming entity is probably the best draw in the deck right there so maybe maybe we're gonna win this game after all So this is a Death Shadow? Fatal Push. Alright. So no Shadow is pretty good for us to see. Opponent probably has a Gurmag Angler in hand then. I'm just going to send a dart upstairs and then try to resolve this Stormwing Entity. And then the reason that I'm casting Dart instead of Lightning Bolt is two reasons. One, it makes the um, it makes any potential death shadows that come off the top smaller. And something cool that it also does is it gives us a free spell available if our opponent um, if our opponent were to have say Lightning Bolt and try to Lightning Bolt this. If Lava Dart were in our hand, we wouldn't be able to protect it. But because it is where it is, we are able to protect it. And um, yeah, that is why gonna bottom this because I'm pretty sure they have Gurmag Angler in hand so just looking for more spells to be honest I don't think that my opponent would try to lightning bolt this just because of how bad the blowout is if I do have something but so they do have Gurmag Angler looks like they might have stubborn an eye too like they're probably gonna hold up that blue mana kind of no matter what so We'll just crack this eyelet and see if we can find something. Alright. And here we just get to shove all in for the kill. Let's see. So if this... So this is three prowess triggers, which means this thing's a six? Ah, uh, jeez. No. If they have stub, we lose, chat. Um... Right? Yeah, three prowess triggers makes a six, plus three is nine. They go to one. Um, so I'm going to bolt first. Okay, they do have stub. I'm still going to cast mutagenic growth. It's probably correct to also cast Lava Dart, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't have anything. So my opponent can't dismember here. So if they don't have a way to like gain life or get Storming Entity off the table, I think we still just win. Yeah, because if you dismember here, you go to one life. And then I have this Lava Dart. Oh. Yep, that's something. Um, we still have them dead on board.
thankfully. So yeah, we just we just flash back lava dart here. Make this thing a 4-4, they're at 4. And easy game. All right, we've successfully beaten uh, Death Shadow twice tonight uh, off the back of some 3-3 three, three elementals. Um, we'll be back for round three. See you soon. All right, welcome back. We're here for round three of Making Magic Happen, playing some blue-red prowess here um, up against Frank Bonaparte. First couple of rounds, we defeated some Grixis Death Shadow pilots, so hopefully we can keep that going. I always like playing games against Shadow, they're like super interesting. I'm not really about keeping one-landers with this deck very much, so we're going to ship that one. This one looks a lot better. We have to go turn one, Soul Scar Mage, and then just hopefully turn two... Hopefully we have to go turn two, Stormwing Entity. This is like kind of the best card in the deck, so hopefully, hopefully it sticks. And we're playing against an Urza's Tower strategy. Now, this could be either... Could be either Green Tron or Eldrazi Tron. Um, don't really know yet. Honestly, kind of hoping that they are Green Tron, just because Green Tron doesn't play Chalice of the Void, which is a huge problem card for us. Um, let's think here. I'm gonna ship in. I'm gonna cast Mutagenic Growth here. Turn on our Stormwing Entity, and then hopefully just like go for a kill next turn. All right, so let's think about this. If we were to go opt into Sprite Dragon, gut shot, gut shot, we would be in like a really good spot. I think I'm gonna top both of these. Um, if our opponent plays something like a Karn here, that could be bad, but we've still got a pretty strong grip. So, honestly hoping that they just play, like, an O-Stone or a smaller Karn or something like that. Or, maybe they're just, like, still Eldrazi Tron and they just play, like, a Thought Knot Seer here. That wouldn't be bad. Big Karn here taking out our Stormwing Entity. Isn't great, but Worm Coil Engine. Uh, the good news is we have two Flyers. So let's do some math here. If we go opt, our Stormwing Entity is a 4-4. Four, four. Play Sprite Dragon, Gut Shot, Gut Shot. That's two prowess triggers. Uh, two damage puts our opponent to 14. This is a 6-6. Six, six. They're at 8. Um, unfortunately, that's not likely to be a winning line. Hmm, let's think. So... That would deal four, six, eight, eight damage. They're at eight. Plus Sprite Dragons of three, three. They're at five. They go back up to eleven, and then we have um. So we can't really win by drawing Sprite Dragon. I think that we're going to fetch before we opt and just look for something else. It's kind of unfortunate because flyers are like really good against Worm Coil Engine, but um, I, I just don't think that we can win by doing that. They like get in an attack with Worm Coil, so. Alright, we'll keep, we'll keep. Playing this opt. Playing these ops as they come. Alright. Not in the best spot here. Um, I'm just going to play this light up the stage. Uh, we, we can't win this turn, but there's, there's an outside chance we can line up a win for next turn if our opponent doesn't have anything else. If we hit, like, mutagenic, mutagenic here, that would be pretty great. Um, I'm trying to think. Do I want to attack with Soul Scar Mage or not? I don't think so. 
because it could just eat Worm Coil Engine, but Worm Coil Engine does have Death Touch, so I think that we need them to attack with Worm Coil. We're going to play Swift Spear, play Manamorphos, and try to win next turn. They get to go up to 14, but we've got at least two Prowess Triggers lined up across three bodies. So if we draw something good off of the Manamorphos or our draw step, we could be in good shape. Of course, if our opponent like has a real play here, like Oblivion Stone, we're probably in a lot of trouble. <laughs> probably can't win this game now. Yeah, all right. I I'm just going to concede. We're not beating this O-Stone plus Worm Coil. So, just go ahead and go to game two. Um, against Tron, I like to bring in these cards. We're not really trying to win long games, so Bedlam Reveler's kind of out. Let's see, and then I'm fine cutting like a gut shot and an opt, I think. Just because, um, cutting opt just because we need to be like as mana efficient as possible. It's possible I'm supposed to cut two and just leave all my gut shots in. Uh, that's close. I think I'm going to try that. I don't know if you can like actually cut ops from this deck, but I think that we need all of our free spells to try to get a turn to um, Stormwing Entity. This isn't a bad hand. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a good turn one play, but I think we're just going to play a turn two Stormwing Entity. We might play a Sprite Dragon instead. We will have to do the math and see what our hand looks like. Um, it's almost definitely right to just play the Stormwing Entity. Ooh, that changes things. Yeah, we're, we're just going to play the Stormwing Entity here. And then next turn we can go... Sprite Dragon, and then just try to go off. Ooh, Double Bolt. What does that do for us? So let's just say next turn we were to go Attack with Stormwing Entity, that's three. Bolt You, Bolt You is two prowess triggers, makes it five plus six is 11. Gut Shot, Gut Shot, each Gut Shot's worth two, so that's 15 damage. I mean, I think that we just, like, leave both bolts on top and then go for a large Sprite Dragon next turn. Just, like, having those bolts there makes it so that even if they do have a big turn three play, like a Warm Coil Engine or a Karn, then we can still just burn them out. Yep. So I'm not like super good at prowess math, but right here we're playing Sprite Dragon, which is four. Each of these, each of these gut shots is worth three damage at that point. So then we're, we're dealing ten here. All right, our opponent's at ten. Um, they don't have any sort of sweeper. Worm Coil Engine doesn't do anything because both our creatures are flyers. Um, yeah, that just gets, like, ensnaring bridge, I think. I, I can't really think of a way that we lose now, so we should be good to go here. Trinisphere. Oh. Okay, that's a bad one, y'all. Um... Yeah, that's that's not really one that I was thinking about. So it's it's entirely possible that leaving these bolts on top was was just bad against Karn. Um, holy crap! Let's think. What what can they go and get with their second Karn activation? They can get a Sky Boat, which would probably KO us. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's really bad. I probably should have put one of those bolts on the bottom. I just wasn't really thinking about small Karn. Alright, 
What's this? It's just a walking bullet? Oh, jeez. Okay, y'all. So if I draw third land, we've got a shot here. But if I don't draw third land, we're probably just dead. So I'm just going to minus five here, I think. Although, yeah, that's what makes most sense. Trinosphere, yo, that's like, that's really good. All right, I mean, just going to go bolt you, bolt you, and then hope it's good enough. Like, if, if our opponent doesn't have a way to gain life here, then it is definitely possible that we can win. Okay. Oh, wow. We might actually do this. Go ahead. All right, uh, we just need to we just need to fade one more time. They've got like four draws at it, but they're gonna need like a Thrag Tusk. I think Thrag Tusk is the only thing that can do it here. They're too far away from an Ugin Ultimate. Um, Ulamog would kill us here because Ulamog would just be able to kill our lands and then we couldn't do anything. So let's try to fade that. They're still going. Imagine if they had a Thrag Test, they would have fired it off by now. Okay. Uh huh. Um, I know they don't have anything like Radiant Fountain in their deck, and if they did, they'd already play the land this turn, so I, I think that we've got this one, y'all. Wow. What a sweat. I, I really didn't think we were going to be able to do that. But we got there. And we get a game three because of it. Awesome. Alright, so... Thinking about our plan again, I think I like just maxing out on our free spells. I don't think I want to bring in, like, a braid. I think that's just, like, super narrow. Like, yeah, it can be fine against Worm Coil, but I think I would rather just, like, try to kill them. Hmm. I think I'm just going to do this again. I could be really wrong to not bring in a braid here, but that's just kind of how I'm feeling. I'm just not really sure, like, what the plan needs to be. This hand is solid. About as fast a start as we can ask for, so. Hopefully our opponent mulligans to, like, three or something. Hmm? Down to four? Okay, that's not bad. It means that they're a good Tron player. They, like, know how to click the mulligan button until they find a good hand. Down to three. Okay. Two. What's gonna happen, chat? <laughs> I'm so I've gotta keep stop calling y'all chat. This is gonna be on YouTube. Alright, our opponent kept a two card hand of Tronland plus Expedition Map. Um We could still very easily lose this game. So we're gonna need to Make sure that we put this one away as quickly as possible. Yeah. Let's just... I'm willing to just, like, get Sprite Dragon in play here. And then go for this Stormwing shenanigan stuff next turn. Not want to draw lands here. Oh, 
All right, there's Tron. So if our opponent has like a Worm Coil or something, we could be in trouble next turn. Uh, thankfully, we have this Lava Dart, which is two spells. Our team is currently at six power. Lava Dart is plus three per cast, so another six power, plus two damage. So we have exactly lethal here. If my math is correct. Okay, well, if we didn't before, Mutagenic makes it lethal now, but we should be good to go here. There we go. And that'll do it. Sometimes sometimes all you need is to get to game three versus Tron and then they'll they'll beat themselves just by mulliganing into oblivion. So obviously like our opponent had a good strategy there. That's like what you're supposed to do, but sometimes it's just not gonna work out. Alright, hey everyone, welcome back for round four here of Making Magic Happen. We're playing this blue red prowess deck. We're off to a pretty good start. Uh, we've beaten two Grixis Shadow decks and a Tron deck in round three. So Hoping to keep this going. I'm um, looking at this hand, it's a pretty good one. We are hoping to find a blue source here so that we can cast Storming Entity, but we're on the draw, we have a couple light up the stages, so we're gonna go ahead and keep it. A sloth. Looks like we're playing against some Amulet Titan. Arboreal Grazer is like definitely their best card against us, so not a great start, but hopefully we're able to find a blue source next turn and get the Storming Entity in play before they have too fast of a draw. Opponent just drawing all the cards that are naturally good against us. I'm just going to start out with an attack from Soulscar Mage. Um, we're going to Mutagenic Growth it. Just so that we can turn on Storming Entity and get this Arboil Grazer out of the way. I would like to see a Lava Dart or a Lightning Bolt on top of the deck so that we can cast these light up the stages before combat. Neither of those lands are going to be what's up. So yeah, ideally I would like to trigger Spectacle and cast Light up the stage before combat next turn, but it's also entirely possible that we just die this turn because our opponent can just go land land into Titan or Castle Garen break into Titan, so hoping to fade that. Well, Explore means that our opponent doesn't have a Primeval Titan this turn, which is pretty good for us. Okay, so it looks like they're just stuck on these three lands, which is really good for us. Alright, we'll take a gut shot. Trigger Spectacle, we're able to get this light up the stage going. Unfortunately, don't find very much that's good off of it, but that's okay, we'll just cast the second one. Wow, that was not bad. Um, we're probably going to cast Bedlam Reveler next turn. Get a good draw three, and then get a good attack in, hopefully. Honestly, I really just want our opponent to keep missing land drops here. I know it's kind of mean, but... What's this? Karn the Great Creator. That's fine. We can attack through that. Or 
Rather, we can kill that next turn if we want to. Grafter's Cage isn't ideal. Um, I don't think that we want to cast Lava Dart in response to that. I think we just let it resolve and then rely on our Bedlam Reveler. I just don't want to make our Reveler more expensive than it needs to be. I'm not playing the land from Exile just because the one point of damage might matter, and we're going to be discarding this land anyways, so losing the fetch land from the light of the stage isn't really isn't really a difference maker. I'm gonna send Stormwing at Karn, the other two at my opponent. Looks like they're thinking about whether or not they want to block here. Yeah, I probably wouldn't block either if I were them. They really need this Dryad to survive, so... I'm, I'm just assuming that their last card is Primeval Titan, because if their last card isn't Primeval Titan, then we're just in like a really good spot. So if I had Primeval Titan in my hand, I would be doing Valakit math right now. I would be saying, if we go and get two Valakits off the Primeval Titan trigger, what can we do with that? And they, they do probably need Valakits to win. They probably can't win with just Prime Time on its own. Although it's possible that they could set up some like Deal to the Dead shenanigans. I guess we'll have to see. But if I were them, I would be very scared of a mutagenic growth here. So we get the Karn down. Opponent finds another Dryad of the Elysian Grove. Which doesn't really do anything, it's just another body. Um, we'll just start by right click attack all, I think. Probably just going to use this gut shot to shrink one of these dryads because our opponent can't just run no blocks back again. So we'll see how they decide to block. We will gut shot this dryad to save our soul scar mage and kill this other dryad. So those will bounce. Bedlam Reveler will, will eat the other one. And now we're just hoping to draw a spell next turn. Devil. What devils does Amulet Titan play? Okay, looks like they were just choosing a meme name there. Probably not any actual devils that we have to worry about. So this matchup, big fan of Ether Gust and Blood Moons. Ether Gust because it counters Primeval Titan. Blood Moon because it shuts off their whole deck. Let's see. Not a huge fan of Bedlam Reveler. A lot of the times the way we're gonna win these games is we're gonna to need to force through like the last points of damage through a Field of the Dead, through some zombies, or through like a Titan or something like that. So Bedlam Reveler probably isn't where we wanna be for those games. We just really wanna have a fast start and then be able to squeeze through our last points of damage after our opponent finds a Primeval Titan. So I'm gonna cut these. Probably gonna cut a couple gut shots and then an opt. Hmm. Yeah, we'll give this a try.
Hands pretty solid. One drop, two drop. One, sorry. One drop, two drop, and a couple of free spells is right where we want to be in this matchup. It's just going as fast as we can. Um, if we had Blood Moon, that would be cool, but Blood Moon isn't like... We only have two copies, and it's not guaranteed to win the game, so we can't really mulligan to it. Opponent's on a mold of five. Another good draw. You know, I just love drawing all these free spells. Free spells are just so good. It's kind of what this deck's all about. What's up, opponent? Alright, we're really happy to see no Bounce Land after that Explore, because Bounce Land would have just like let them reset their Radiant Fountain, which would have been pretty bad for us. So we're just going to jam Sprite Dragon and attack here. Probably not going to do anything else. I don't think that we need to cast this Mutagenic Growth yet, but we probably should, to be honest. Our opponent doesn't really have any like damage-centric removal, unless we count Dismember, but... I think that the um, getting the counter on Sprite Dragon sooner rather than later is going to be pretty valuable for us. Wow. Okay, no land number five. Again, that's that's just really good. So there's no way in my opponent's deck for them to. Primeval Titan me next turn. Let's start thinking if I can go for a kill here. So if I go Morphos, Morphos, Dart, Dart, Gust. That's five spells. So that's plus 10 to my 13 right now, which means we would be leaving my opponent at one life. I believe. No, sorry. Yeah, one life. I, I think that I'm going to just start by casting these Manamorphoses and seeing what we find. I do like another Sprite Dragon. Yeah, let's just cast second Sprite Dragon here and attack with everything. Depending on where they block with Grazer, I'm gonna lava dart either them or the Grazer. Just lava dart them. Hmm? Opponent chooses to go no blocks, which is really interesting. Just gonna pass here. And because my opponent's um, three non castle lands are all colorless or Teleri West, they didn't have a way to make green mana for their castle Garen Brig there, so it was just impossible them, for them to tighten us. Um, they also really don't play sweepers at that CMC, so there wasn't really anything we were worried about there. Alright, 4-0. Oh. Let's get started on that match number 5, try to get this trophy. Alright, we're back for round 5, playing some blue-red prowess here. This hand is... close. Two swift spears and two free spells, three free spells I should say. Makes me really, really, um... Makes me feel good about this hand. Problem is we only have one land. 
However, we're on the draw, and because we have two pretty substantial one-drop plays, I think I'm willing to keep it and gamble with this. I could very easily see being wrong about this hand, but we're going to give it a go. Looks like we're playing against some sort of black-white deck. This could be Eldrazi in taxes, it could just be black-white taxes. We'll see. Um, unfortunately, Thalia is like a really good card against us, so hoping that our opponent doesn't have that. Gonna be pretty interesting to see what our opponent decides to take here. Should tell us a little bit about their hand. They take a lightning bolt. Okay, that makes sense. I think here, I'm just gonna play the second Swift Spear. Attack with both. And I'm debating here if I want to double gut shot this Tide Hollow Scholar and just rebuy Lightning Bolt. I think we probably do. The only problem is that if our opponent has Thalia and we don't find a second land, we have no way of getting Thalia off the table. And so I think I would rather not like just lose to that. So we're just going to pass the turn here. Just like make it two damage, pass the turn. If our opponent has Thalia, we still have an answer to it. And then we can um, really just hope that we draw a land to deal with this Tide Hollow Scholar. Or we can use this Lava Dart. We'll see. I will say about this hand, if we didn't have the second Swift Spear, I definitely, if it, um, if it weren't just two one drops like this, plus two free spells, I definitely wouldn't have kept, just because that hand is just so likely to do nothing. You see here that even though we're stuck, we're still managing to do something powerful. We're still managing to attack and put our opponent in a tight spot and answer their creatures, but I can still see being wrong about keeping that, because in some matchups this hand just like doesn't really do anything. Definitely close. Opponent deep in the tank here. They do know about our gut shots. The only card that they don't know about is Lava Dart, so it's possible that they're hesitant to play a one drop creature, a one toughness creature like a Thalia just because we do have the answer lined up. So, we'll see what they do. Them looking at our hand probably makes it less likely they play something like that. What's this? I'm just going to attacks. Attack them for two. So then I have to imagine they'll be playing something that can block our Swift Spears here. I might have a Thought Knot Seer here. Thought Knot Seer would be really bad for us. Okay, just a Thalia, which is fine. Giver of Runes is a little bit more scary. All right, we'll just start with an attack here. No blocks from our opponents, pretty expected there. Really hoping that we draw a land here and can make something happen with the Mana Morphos. And then our goal here is probably just to get Stormwing Entity into play. So I can just go over all their blockers. Wasteland Strangler. Okay, that's really bad. That is really bad.
just going to get some damage in here. This could backfire, but our opponent can't kill us yet, and I think that we really need to be putting them on the back foot. Like, yeah, they have a lot of creatures, but if we're lucky, we can get um, we can get some of their creatures into blocking situations with our Monastery Swift Spear, and then our free spells will make that bad for our opponent. So casting an Eldrazi spell. I don't know if it's going to be Thought Not Seer or something like a Displacer. Hopefully it's not a Thought Not Seer. I don't really want them being able to look at our hand, take our Stormwing Entity away. That would be pretty bad. We're probably going to be out of this one then. Really hard for us to... It, it's pretty easy for us to attack through like 2-2s two and 3-2s, but getting through a 4-4 four four is an entirely different story. Opponent takes Manamorphose. Okay. Makes sense. So if I were a gut shot here, I would be able to cast Bedlam Reveler. Problem is I would need to pay three life. I would be at two, and then my opponent has three lethal attackers. Our other option is Stormwing Entity. Which one of those is better? Stormwing Entity at 4 life, or Bedlam Reveler at 2 life. I think the Stormwing... Oh, it's just not going to matter, is it? Our opponent can... No, no, it's we're, we're supposed to play Stormwing here. Try to set up um, Scribe Bolts to the top and just try to kill our opponent next turn. Unfortunate that we're at 4... The good news is our creatures are different colors, so our opponent can't use Giver of Runes to force this Thought Not Seer through. We will lose Stormwing Entity, but we will be able to survive. Um, we're going to leave both of those on top. Those are going to hopefully power out this Bedlam Reveler. really complicated math for our opponent to do here. We did go top top, which has to be really scary. If they drew a removal spell here, they obviously just win. They can't attack with everything, because then we can block in such a way that we stay at one life, although it's possible that just attacking with everything is the best way to go. Although actually, no, it's not, because we do have Lava Dart in our graveyard for prowess triggers, so then we could make our things survive. We'll see what they do. Um, it's possible that we're going to use Lava Dart to make Stormy Entity trade with Thought Knots here. Put our opponent to five. Okay, so yeah, it looks like our opponent is going to be giving Thought Knots here protection from red and attacking with it. We're going to have an interesting decision here. If our opponent attacks with just the Thought Not Seer, it's not good for us, but I think that we need to flashback Lava Dart so that we can trade with it. Because otherwise, we need to win the game next turn, and it's just so unlikely that we do that because we need to find. Let's see, so we have two Metamorphoses. 
So we're looking at two cards there, three cards from the Bedlam Reveler, and we would need those to find like another Lightning Bolt. Plus a land to cat. Um, actually, our opponent's going to be at five. So they would need another... We would need to find two Lightning Bolts or something similar to that. Okay, wow. This is actually really good for us. Let's go block like that. Lava dart your face. Our Stormwing is trading with Dot Not Seer. Our Swift Spear gets to eat Tide Hollow Sculler. We go to one, so we can't fetch anymore. But we do get to draw a lot of cards this next turn. Probably something we won't have the opportunity to use. Alright, ship with the Swift Spear. Alright, wow, and we get this one. This was this bolt was a really good hit off of Bedlam Reveler. We'll just bolt our opponent. I don't think that they have any way of gaining life at instant speed, so that was a pretty good one. Um, in this matchup, I'm looking at the Abrades. We could also look at Blood Moon, but they do have some basics, and I don't love the idea of a 3-drop that we like kind of need to resolve when our opponent has so much hand attack. I'm going to bring in the Abrades just for the removal. I think that our opponent really messed up by attacking with everything last turn. I think that they were just supposed to attack with Thought Knots here, but I could be wrong about that. What don't we like in this matchup? I'm going to cut a Sprite Dragon, and I don't do this a lot, but I'm actually going to cut two Mutagenic Growths. So because Gutshot is good in this matchup, um, mostly because of Thalia, we can't keep all of our Phyrexian mana spells post-board usually. So, just gonna get rid of the mutagenics instead because the gut shots actually have live targets. Hand is not very good. Too many lands. This one's alright. Decided to bottom Manamorphose there because I think it's pretty likely that on turn two we want to go gut shot plus light up the stage. And Manam um, Bolt is just super powerful, and then we obviously need the second land. So that's the plan here. Now that that's happened, we're just going to go gut shot into Stormwing Entity. So we got a little bit punished, but that's all right. Getting punished by drawing your best card is never a bad place to be. Both these cards are really good. I think I'm going to leave both on top here. Draw the Lava Dart first because I'm not super concerned about... Yeah. And I, I do think it is worth shuffling there, especially because we have this Fiery Eyelet. Lava Dart's only a really good card when it's backed up by having two Prowess Threats out, so... Losing one of our prowess threats makes it a lot less good. Yeah. Not ideal. Which then Strangler is just such a good card against us.
this looks like a Thalia to me. Although, I suppose that our opponent would have vialed in Thalia earlier, just because I'm a deck that has spells, so... It's probably not a Thalia, come to think of it. Okay, so we're gonna get Ghost Quartered here, which is pretty bad. Or we're, I, I should say we're likely to get Ghost Quartered, but... Getting the third land off the path to exile, and hopefully this Manamorphos finding something good for us, makes this not the worst thing in the world. Opponent might be putting in Displacer, oh, Flicker Wisp. Oh no, that's not good. All right, yeah, wow, we just, can't cast either one of these. That's pretty bad. I'm just going to bolt Leon and Arbiter and gut shot Flicker Wisp when our land comes back. Oh. Oh, I messed up there. I, I forgot to have a stop set, so that was that was my bad. The play was going to be just use this mana to gut shot Flicker Wisp, but now we just kind of have to hope they don't have another one. Luckily, didn't get punished for our mistake. Jeez. All right, this is a bad look. It's a real bad look, but I, I think we kind of got to do it. All right, we're not going to win this game. That was kind of just a Hail Mary. If we found land plus like another light of the stage or land bolt, we might not, we might be able to salvage that game, but as it was, I don't think it was worth playing on from that spot. I think I'm just going to do this again. I'm still, like, not in love with Blood Moon. They play enough planes, and, like, Aether Vial can just make Blood Moon look like a joke. So I'm not really willing to devote a three-mana spell to that. I'm willing to keep this hand, though. Just having all threats. We'll draw spells eventually. No Ether Vial is pretty good for us. Oh. Huh. Whoops. I'm sorry, y'all. I'll um I was obviously supposed to play Stormwing Entity before combat there. Or sorry, Sprite Dragon before combat there. That was just a mistake. Um Hopefully that one point of damage doesn't come back to bite us. Rest in peace. Alright. Um Honestly, good. Not super worried about our opponent having a rest in peace. That just honestly doesn't do a whole lot against us. It shuts off one half of Lava Dart, and it shuts off Bedlam Reveler, but it also like doesn't impact the board at all, so we don't we don't mind it a whole lot. It does make Wasteland Strangler very, very good, however. I'm just going to get that out of the way. Hopefully our opponent doesn't have like a path here, but we'll just try to attack. Luckily we get to get our Stormwing Entity into play here, line up another spell on top to set up for next turn. I imagine if our opponent had path, they would have pathed Sprite Dragon by now, so that's good. We will leave Lava Dart on top. It's not the best with Rest in Peace out there, but it's still a spell to trigger prowess, trigger storming entity, so I don't hate it. Man, opponent's just not letting this be. All right, 
Unfortunately, just have to lava dart our opponent here. With them having Oriok Champion, we can't do any like weird tricks of making this into a 2-1 and then running it into our 2-3. Still, two Stormwing Entities is a good spot to be. I'm honestly kind of surprised that our opponent killed... Um... Actually, no, it makes sense for them to get Sprite Dragon instead of... I will take two Mana Morphos, thank you very much. It makes sense for them to take out Sprite Dragon, because if we have a Gut Shot or a Mutagenic Growth, then they just lose the game on the spot. So, all right. Well, we have lethal this turn with the two mana morphos on top of our deck. Ghost quarter doesn't really change that, so our opponent's going to need something here to to protect themselves. They'll need path to exile. Probably has to be. Can't really think of anything else. Yeah, it is path. Um, We've got a good opening here, though. Having two Mana Morphos on top is really where we want to be. Our opponent will definitely have to chump with this Leonin Arbiter, so we will do that. If we draw a Bolt here, it just becomes lethal, so there we go. All right, we 5 0 would That's awesome. What a great way to kick off, kick off my time on the channel. Um... Go back for a little bit of a breakdown. We managed to beat Shadow, Shadow, Tron, Amulet, and Taxes there. And so going forward, um, this deck was pretty good against most of those, them just being either a little bit slower decks or creature-based decks. So what we saw, the big strengths of this deck were Stormwing Entity. Most games where we were able to get this in play, we won. So definitely going to keep maxing out on those. That is the biggest draw to this deck. Sprite Dragon was pretty mediocre, to be honest. And going forward, I think I want to look for ways to replace that, whether that be with a different spell or a different creature to replace it. But it was, like, pretty underwhelming, to be honest. There were never situations where it's, like, really good if you have it on turn two and then have a lot of spells to follow up with. But something about Stormwing Entity is that it can be a good top deck later in the game, whereas Sprite Dragon is just never a good top deck. So I didn't love that, but um, obviously all of these creatures and free spells are just kind of the backbone of the deck, kind of make it run. Light at the stage is always confusing to me, because it just seems... It almost seems like a win more card... I could be completely wrong about that, but I, I haven't been super impressed with it, especially in this deck that plays so few lands. I feel like there's a lot of times where I just... There, there were a couple times where I didn't get to cast both spells. Of course, last game, that was beca or last match, it was because of our opponent stone raining us with um, Ghost Quarter plus Leon and Arbor strip mining us. But, um, yeah. Stormwing Entity was the all-star of this deck. This card's insane. Obviously, the one-drop prowess creatures are great, too, but Stormwing Entity is a great reason to be in blue. As for the sideboard, we didn't play against any Uro decks, so never really saw a point to bring in Surgical Extraction. To be completely honest, I'm not in love with Blood Moon. I've always liked having the, um, the Molten Range or the Pillages in the sideboard of this deck. They're a little bit more flexible, and they can get some damage through. So I think that going forward, I would want to replace Blood Moon with something that actually destroys the lands rather than just Blood Moon, which gets Force of Vigor, gets blown up by like Nature's Claim and stuff like that. Something else that I was pretty unimpressed with is Dragon's Claw. Um, I think the Dragon's Claw is very good against Burn, not very good against Prowess. And right now, the aggro decks of choice are definitely Prowess decks. So if we're trying to win the Mirror, I think that I would look into more removal. we we'll probably max out on Aether Gusts and would honestly just try to get like... What do we want in the Prowess Mirrors? Just like more bolt effects, to be honest. Just like more stuff to kill creatures. I just think that these decks win by making their creatures really big and doing very large chunks of damage. Gaining just like one and two and three life at a time just isn't really what cuts it. So while Prowess is the aggro deck of choice going forward, I would look toward more removal to try to win the Mirrors rather than Dragon's Claw. If Burn picks back up in popularity, then I would definitely lean more toward the Dragon's Claws. Um, that's going to be it. If you have any thoughts about how you want to build the deck or 
any any questions about plays that I made that you have, please drop them down in the comments. Make sure you like, subscribe um, to the channel. I know that Max and Zach have been posting videos pretty regularly as, long as, some, as well as some of the other members of the team. So definitely check those out. These guys have been doing great work and I'm, I'm really excited to be a part of it. If you're interested in catching up with more of my content, I'm on Twitter at Mullally Connor and I stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash mullmoney. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Making Magic Happen.